What's going on, Imperials? We've talked about the first couple of generations and their issues with shiny colors. But with gold and silver, shinies were still in their infancy, as indeed was color itself, with the Generation 1 games barely scratching the surface in yellow version. So, how would it be once the Pokémon could be individually colored? Spoiler alert, some of them are still bad. So, here are the top 6 Hoenn Shinies I would fix. Number 6, Regirock. The Regis are a pretty good legendary trio, even if you do have to trudge through puzzles that would even give Indiana Jones trouble. Regice is my personal favorite out of the three, but they all have their merits. However, one could argue that all of their shinies are terrible in one way or another. Regice is one that barely changes, Registeel belongs to the overly prominent Green Club, but Regirock is the worst to me. Regirock takes a nice sandstone look and destroys any semblance of looking cool. I'm no geologist, but this doesn't look like a rock to me. It looks more like chocolate, or something a lot worse. That's why I'd like a simple change to have Regirock just turn gray. You know, like a rock. If you ask 10 people what a rock looks like, you probably would not come away with a lot of deep browns in your answers. Can we not just let it look like a standard stone? What's wrong with that? Again, I could see grievances with the other Regis, but I'm just hoping that instead of making this one worse, we can finally bring it up to snuff. Number 5, Shedinja. The Ninkata family is an odd one, but one that I've grown to appreciate over time. The Shinies in this bug group all share a golden sheen, and it works out great for the first two. They look good enough, and you can tell the difference without any trouble. But Shedinja wasn't so lucky. As you can see, Shedinja already has a golden hue in its standard form. So the shiny gives it one of the slightest shifts possible in the color spectrum and calls it a day. It is legitimately hard to tell which one is which without the sparkles. That's why I think it'd be nice to make the parts that were supposed to change black. It works on multiple levels. One, it makes Shedinja look more like Ninjask, while Ninjask turns to look more golden in parallel to Shedinja. And two, it keeps with the whole being dead theme rather well with the ghost typing. And really, this one isn't set in stone. It's just the first thing that came to mind when considering something, anything, to fix this fragile bug. So you can use your own imagination if you like. Number four, Seviper. Number one, I really like Seviper. It's a cool snake Pokemon that's far more threatening than the first iteration. Plus, I love the rivalry that it has against Zangoose. And while some people actually like its shiny form, I think we can do better here. Having small changes isn't that bad, but the colors they picked really seem to clash in my opinion. Maybe that's what they were going for to signify strong poison, but the strange greenish color that they chose to replace the gold really doesn't work for me. That's why I think the gold should have been the color that they kept, changing the base to a striking red. That in and of itself is good, but I did take a lead from the official shiny and change the other highlight colors near the face and tail, while redistributing the original purple to the most poisonous parts. This arrangement of colors I think helps keep the spirit of the original shiny, but doesn't leave this Pokemon a weird mix of changing very little but also clashing horribly. Plus, who wouldn't want a giant demonic snake to hurl at their foes? Number 3, Claydol. This one didn't even start out on the list, but looking back through, I was surprised by how much Baltoy Shiny stood out to me, and how much I liked it. Hence the problem. While Baltoy gets to change the highlight colors, Claydol, I guess, changes colors a bit? His overall shade of black lightens ever so slightly and his eyes become more orange or something. They're really minimal changes that just kind of come off as lazy. That's why I'd like the teal colors to carry over into its next evolution. It would make sense due to those same spots being red in its regular form, so why not do the same here? Not only can you tell an immediate difference, but it adds to the air of mysticism that has surrounded this strange, ancient creation since its inception. 
Playdoll may not always be the best in battle, but it has always at least been interesting to me. So I'd like to see it live up to its extraordinary origins. Number 2. The Whismer Line This family of weird speaker mammals is one that I've always enjoyed and found rather iconic for the Hoenn region. There's even a whole cave devoted to just this Pokemon. But when it comes to shinies, it's strange. We'll start with Whismur. It has the yellow highlights turn green, which could be alright, but then Loudred and Exploud have a slight tinge of difference from purple to pink, and nothing more. Can we not have some consistency here? While I could have simply made them all follow suit from the first stage, I decided now would be a good time to spruce up Whismur as well. I think having their purple fur turning into a dark, charcoal-type gray would certainly help to make these Pokémon more threatening. And with the latter ones, you can actually tell that they're shiny, being able to stand out at a glance, while also adding a clear through line that, as of right now, is lacking in their color schemes as a whole. So, darkening these Sonic powerhouses I think would help to show off a tougher side and to remind everyone that they should not be underestimated. Number 1. Groudon and Kyogre This legendary duo serves as the mascot legendaries for the Hoenn games. And while we were just talking about unintimidating shinies, these two are some of the worst. They have complete mastery over the land and the sea, respectively, but their shiny colors make them look like huggable children's toys at best, and flat-out laughable at worst. But you're smart. You clicked on the thumbnail. I think the best way to remedy this would be for these elemental behemoths to simply swap their main colors. Groudon takes on the blue skin with the red highlights, while Kyogre co-ops the red and black color scheme. As you can see, the results are not half bad. I can't imagine how confused Team Aqua or Magma would be if they accidentally awakened a shiny looking like their rival's mascot. Kyogre looks like it's ready for business. You will not mess around with his ocean. And Groudon would stand out from the crowd in a good way, being quite noticeable were it just chilling out in a volcano. Plus the red spacings almost make it look like the lava when it's in its primal form. Speaking of, they could keep the black shinies when in their primal form, because those look pretty amazing, especially with the glowing parts, and they wouldn't necessarily have to carry the swap over from these standard forms. Instead of their dopey current forms, I believe it would be more imposing and far more significant to have these feuding forces of nature show off their connection to one another by adopting their colors, creating something truly legendary. So, those are the shiny Pokémon from Hoenn I would fix. There were some close calls and changes to this list, so let me know which ones you would fix down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!